What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network for a reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the sponsors and participants of this very great open source organization. Today, newsletter number 42, on April 16th, 2019. This week's newsletter requests testing of the latest release candidates for Bitcoin Core and LND. And it describes how helping people accept payments to back 32 addresses can lower fees and list notable code changes in popular Bitcoin projects. Action items. Help test Bitcoin Core version 0.18 release candidate. The third release candidate for its next major version is available and a fourth is being prepared. Testing is greatly appreciated and please use this issue for reporting feedback. Please also help test the Lightning Network Daemon version 0.6 beta release candidate 4 for the next major, major version of LND, and they are being published. Testing by organizations and experienced Lightning Network users is encouraged to catch any regressions or serious problems that could affect users of the final release. Open a new issue if you discover any problems. News. No notable technical news this week. Note, when we at Optech started this newsletter, we decided to avoid stuffing short newsletters with fluff pieces and other unnecessary information. So newsletter length varies depending on the actual amount of significant technical news each week. You've probably seen us publish an occasional very long newsletter, and this week you will see the opposite. Back 32 sending support, week five of 24, until the second anniversary of the SegWit soft fork lock-in on August 24th, 2019. The Optech newsletter will contain, contain a weekly section that provides information to help developers and organizations implement Back 32 sending support. The ability to pay native SegWit addresses, this does not require implementing SegWit yourself, but it does allow the people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. One reason your users and customers may want you to implement back 32 sending support is because it will allow the receivers of those payment to save on fees when they re-spent that money. This week, we'll look at how much money they'll save and discuss how their savings could also help your save money. For the legacy pay-to-public key hash address format implemented in the first version of Bitcoin, the script signature authorizes a spend is typically 107 virtual bytes. For pay-to-script hash wrapped SegWit, uh, pay-to-witness public key hash, this same information is moved to a witness data field that only consumes one-fourth as many bytes, which is 27 virtual bytes, but whose pay-to-script hash overhead adds another 32 or 23 virtual bytes for a total of 50 virtual bytes. For native SegWit pay-to-witness public key hash, there is no pay-to-script hash overhead, so 27 virtual bytes is all that is used. This means that you could argue that pay to script hash and pay to witness public key hash save over 50% compared to pay to public key hash. And that pay to witness public key hash saves another almost 50% compared to pay to script hash, pay to witness public key hash. Or 75% compared to pay to public key hash alone. However, Spending transactions contain more than just the script signature and witness data. So the way we usually compare savings is by looking at a prototype transaction. For example, we imagine a typical transaction containing of a single input and two outputs, one to the receiver and one as change back to the spender. In this case, spending pay to public key hash has a total transaction size of 220 virtual bytes. Spending 
to pay to script hash and pay to witness public key hash has a size of 167 virtual bytes, which is 24% savings. And spending pay to witness public key hash outputs has a size of 141 virtual bytes, which is 16% savings versus wrapped SegWit or 35% versus pay to public key hash. To compare simple multisig transactions, those that just use a single opcheck multisig opcode, things get more complex because k of n multisig inputs vary in size depending on the number of signatures k and the number of public keys n. So for simplicity's sake, we'll just plot the size of the legacy pay to script hash multisig compared to the wrapped pay to script hash, pay to witness script hash multisig. Up to the maximum of 15 of 15 supported by legacy pay to script hash. We can see that switching to pay to script hash, pay to witness script hash can save from about 40% in a one of two multisig to about 70% of a 15 of 15. And here we see the fee savings that we get uh, with native SegWit, uh, or sorry, with wrapped SegWit compared to pay to script hash. We can then compute the pay to script hash of pay to witness script hash to native pay to script pay to witness script hash to see the additional constant sized savings of about 35 bytes per transactions or about 5% to 15%. The script described above accounts for almost all scripts being used with addresses that are not native SegWit. Users of more complex scripts, such those used in Lightning Network, are mostly using native SegWit today. Those less efficient script types currently consume a majority fraction of block capacity, the total block weight. Switching to native SegWit in order to reduce a transaction's weight alone uh, allows you to reduce its fee by the same percentage without changing how long it will take to confirm, all other things being equal. But all other things are not equal. Because the transaction uses less block weight, there's more weight available for other transactions. If the supply of available block weight increases and the demand remains constant, we expect prices to go down, unless they're already at the default minimum relay fee. This means that more people spending native SegWit inputs lowers the fee, not just for those spenders, but for everyone who creates transactions, including wallets and services that support sending to BEC32 addresses. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, Lightning Network Daemon, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P 256K1, and Bitcoin Improvement Proposals. Note that all merges described for Bitcoin Core and LND are to their master development branch. Some may also be backported to their pending releases. This Bitcoin Core change generates Bank32 addresses by default in the GUI. The user can still generate a pay to script hash wrapped SegWit address by unchecking a box on the request payment screen in the case they need to receive money from a service that does not yet provide Bank32 sending support. The Bitcoin D default of generating pay to script hash wrapped SegWit addresses is not changed. This C Lightning change adds a min capacity set configuration parameter to reject channels upon request below a certain value. This replaces a hard coded minimum of 0.00001 Bitcoin previously in the code. This LND change adds a document describing LND's current backup and recovery options. This C Lightning change adds an invoice hook that is called whenever a valid payment for an unpaid invoice has arrived. Among other tasks that can be performed with a payment is received, this can be used by a plugin to implement hold invoices as previously implemented in LND. 
see our description in LND, in this LND change of newsletter 38. And this final C Lightning change changes the default invoice expiration from one hour to one week. This is the time after which the node will automatically reject acceptance or attempts to pay the invoice. Services that want to minimize the exchange risk, the exchange rate risk, will need to pass a lower expiry value when they use the invoice RPC. Peers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Thanks again to all the founders and the principals and associates of this great open source organization. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.